Live from Boston, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reinforce 2019. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services and its ecosystem partners. So everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage here in Boston for AWS reinforce. Amazon Web Services inaugural event. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante. Two days of wall-to-wall -wall covering. Christian Bacon is the CTO and co-founder of Sumo Logic, a company we've covered on theCUBE many times, as well as on our SiliconAngle.com. Great to see you, thanks for coming, coming well, on. Thanks for having me. Uh, being the co-founder, you've seen that you guys are celebrating your 10th year. That's Congratulations. Right. Thank you very much. The Cube is now 10 years old this year too, oh, right so on, you know. we're kind of in school together, growing up. Yeah. <laughs> Started right here. We're going to graduate together. Like, right on. We'll have a cocktail later, maybe talk yeah, about yeah. some tech. We love talking tech. Yeah, of course. Let's get into it. As the co-founder and CTO, you've seen your journey. You guys have been doing great. You've seen the waves of big data. Yep. You've seen the evolution of cloud coming in. Yep. The infrastructure standing up more and more efficient, more effective. The game is changing, stakes are higher. What's your view of this industry right now? I think it's on fire, really, right? Uh, uh, so, you know, on, on one level we have this, uh, I think it's, it's fairly well known at this point that the data now today follows Moore's law, right? So we have basically, you know, data grows, you know, roughly 2x year over year. Uh, that's exponential growth, right? And then and, and that's, that's just pretty incredible, right? I, I think every, every business now knows or, or you know, they, they, they either know and already act on it or they sort of know at least, you know, subconsciously, right, uh, that they are essentially in a, in, a, in, a, in a race to sort of optimize, you know, their own business, you know, mostly based on data, you know. In your opinion, Christian, what was the inflection point of the past few years? When did the data market really change for the highly accelerated we're seeing now? Because, you know, back in 2010 when you guys started, when we started, we saw Hadoop just getting out of the blocks. Yep. You know, people were standing up Hadoop clusters and be proud of it but then cloud came. Was there a point in time where you say, you know, that was really the flash point where things start tipping over? Was it cloud adoption? Was it AI machine? Was it machine learning? Where yeah. do you see the, the kick up on the growth of emphasis? So, you know, the Hadoop stuff basically came out of the ad optimization, you know, you know businesses, and there was a, like a small set of companies that really had to do that and, you know, in, in order to basically compete with each other. And then uh, we got sort of open source versions of that, and then, you know, Google get, got behind the MapReduce model and like teaching people how to do that. Um, you know, I, I think, so I, in my mind, so I, I observed two things. One was, you know, the whole log management space that, that I came out of and, you know, where I am still am today, um, coming out of, you know, the security information event management, you know, a lot of log management underneath, semi-structured data, you know, nasty data that doesn't fit into a relational database. Um, you know, there's sort of, and then lots and lots of that data as you put, you know, all the firewall data in there, you mm -hmm. know, and we, we, we saw that, you know, back at ArcSight uh, where I spend a considerable amount of time. Um, you know, that becoming a problem that like enterprise software that was kind of delivered, you know, on a CD, you know, and then, oh, now go scale Oracle behind it, you know, as an event data warehouse. Like, that, that's kind of how I experienced it. It just didn't really work very well. Uh, and uh, we, we were like, kind of doing big data or trying to do big data there with like various levels of success, <laughs> right? Um, without even knowing about the term. And then, you know, obviously picked up on Hadoop and those types of things. And, and then, you know, but if you want to do big data with something like Hadoop, then you're suddenly running into having to run, you know, I don't know, 100 instances, I'm, I'm already saying instances. 100 boxes, <laughs> right, you know, back then. And, uh, or like maybe 500 boxes. And, you know, now you're running into all of the management, you know, challenges that like a distributed infrastructure brings. And, and in my mind, you know, since you're like asking for an inflection point, I think, like, I think Amazon EMR, you know, and like my friends at like Cloudera, they're not going to like me saying that because yeah. of course that's a long story. But, you know, I think having something like Hadoop, you know, you know, put on an infrastructure as a service platform like Amazon, and I, I think they did that yeah. fairly early on, right? Uh, I, I think it's still a great product. Cloud you know. scales it up faster, so, it emphasizes it more. Exactly. You can do more with right. it. IoT comes around now, your connected devices are coming yeah. in, natural, natural place to just put that data lake, as they now called it, and exactly. work with it. That's the exactly. nasty data. So I think that's one inflection yeah. point, and then the second one I think clearly was sort of the AAD advancements, especially like around deep learning and so forth, right? Where, uh, you know, I think a lot of that would, you know, the deep mind stuff and so forth, where now, you know, you know, you know along with the sort of uh, kind of exponential growth of data, where there's also now much more sophisticated analysis that people want to run. I think that's another inflection point. Yeah. yeah, so 2010 you saw cloud and data coming together, and then obviously you guys saw the need to secure that. Yeah. What are the challenges of securing these massively distributed systems? Oh, there's a number of challenges, but you know, it starts with sort of this basic law that uh, that says that you know, uh, you know, uh, the, the, you know, processing data creates more data, 
right? And if you look at what business systems do, they're basically, you know, just like very fancy pocket calculators at large scale, right? But it's all about processing data. That's, that's what computing means, right? Yeah. And then as you do that, it actually turns out that you create more data, which is all the logs, you know, all the telemetry, the metrics tracing, all of this type of stuff. And so these, uh, uh, these data sets become their own kind of, you know, big data nightmares potentially, right? But at the same time, they're very, uh, uh, you know, they're full of you know, really useful information to maintain availability and performance, uh, you know, to, to secure your systems and so forth. And uh, I think the main challenge you know, that, that we are seeing today with a system like ours and what's out there in the market is you know, actually being able to scale. And it becomes almost a recursive thing. It's kind of funny. You know, I got to ask you about the digital transformation equation that, that, that's out there. People, process, technology. Um, I think people generally would agree that, hey, cloud's great, love deep learning. I mean, how could you not you know, get intoxicated on large yeah. scale resources that's almost free. Yeah. <laughs> and AI around the corner with all yeah. this good stuff. I mean, it's pretty cool, right? Yeah. And then the reality sits in, like you can't just hand wave it in, you got to hire people, you got to have the tech to do it, and then the process. And you used to make a profound comment before we came on camera, uh, process is a reflection of culture. Yeah. This is a really a big deal in the digital transformation. So there are people out there, and people are getting trained, there's courses you can take, you can buy technology, it's getting better every yeah. day. Process seems to be where everyone's getting caught up on it, and yep. there's new ways to break through it, and just it's just a reality. What's your thoughts on process as a reflection of culture, and what how people can handle that, and what people should think about? That's a good question. So I think what I'm seeing is that uh, when we when we we see a lot of companies at, at various stages of you know their sort of you know you know journey into the cloud. You know, in the, like we come from the Bay Area, so we have a lot of like born in like a bunch of born in the cloud guys like ourselves and. And you know, there's a there's a sort of a new culture that's kind of baked in from the beginning. But you know, that's interesting. The, the, the even more interesting bits in my mind are when we are looking at companies that have been around for a long time. They they basically, you know, they're starting to realize that cloud transformation is almost more about you know basically picking up you know culture of you know agile, DevOps, and then you know you know. DevSecOps or whatever you want to call it. Apparently somebody at the keynote today made a nasty <laughs> comment about it, which unfortunately <laughs> I didn't see it, but uh, uh, again, you know, uh, the whole shift left paradigm, but it's, it's essentially a culture where you, know, you bring, you actually you know, remove the silos that have been in place between departments, you know, keeping people like, from working closely together, you know, throwing stuff over the wall, and we all know how well that works, you know, trying to keep your fiefdoms, and I find that all the successful you know, cloud transformation stories that we've seen are really at their core, you know, cultural transformation stories, you know, along the sort of plus minus DevOps route. So right? you talked about the big challenge being scale. Yeah. So two things you just said. Well, one is bringing together the, the, the mindset of infrastructure as code, we were talking about security yep. as code, and the other is automation. Yep. Right, so. Absolutely. So, yep. so that seems to be a big focus of security practitioners. Yep. My question is, what's a good day look like to a security practitioner? Oh, I think ah, that's, a, that's another really good question, and you know, I think there's an obvious answer, you know, but I think that one doesn't. The obvious answer would be, you know, you know, I'm still in business, <laughs> right? And you know, I haven't, I haven't leaked, you know, like millions of social security numbers. Nothing uh, happened. <laughs> good know? day. And so I, I think that is definitely a good day. But I think you know, we, you know, the, the the sort of like slightly more, you know, I think you know, interesting answer is that. I think a good day is a day where you as a security practitioner have a bunch of good interactions with the rest of the folks in the company that are that are part of building products, right? On the operational side, on the you know development side, you know, giving good feedback on, you know, maybe to a bunch of developers on you know secure coding practices, you know, plugging in additional um, video monitoring or you know code monitoring you know, vulnerability scanning tools into the build pipeline and so forth. And then also, you know, actually getting a bunch of alerts from all your monitoring systems and being able to very quickly uh, figure out whether those are, you know, true positives or false positives. And when they are true positives, being able to quickly react on them. Right, yeah. so, so you guys, obviously cloud focused, that's a huge you know, area of, for, for you. But I, I'm interested in how you say you differentiate. It's an extremely competitive market. Yes. Um, what's your big differentiator? When you win, why do you win? So it goes back to some of the very fundamental kind of you know, things that like, led us to start the company. Um, it's a little philosophy heavy, I guess, but like, it actually plays its way out in every, yeah. in every single customer conversation, every displacement, you know, in, in, in every, every time we end up you know, expanding in the customer. And it's fundamentally that you know, our philosophy is that this needs to be delivered as a service. That you know, our philosophy is that you know, enterprise software is just not a thing anymore. 
uh, you know, and our philosophy has always been. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's true. Yeah. You know, it's, it's very great true. philosophy. It's, it, it sometimes feels like, man, Christine, you've been saying the same thing you know, for the last right. ten years, and and you know, here we are, right? And you know, yeah. we're. Our philosophy is that you know you need monitoring, you need troubleshooting tools, you need security tools. Uh, those tools themselves should not become uh, you know behemoths in their self where you're going to sink you know endless amount of resources and uh, and uh, uh, you know and then money and you know scaling and building them out and then you know who's going to monitor those? It's kind of you have a huge installation of you know vendor X and then how does that get monitored? Because if you don't monitor it, then that thing will blow up, right? And then you're blind again. And you know so we just felt that this idea, what was really appealing to us from our experience was the idea that you know build the code but also run the code was ultimately you know get the customer back to actually using the tool rather than worrying about you know how the tool works underneath and having to worry about how to make it work. And we're all nerds and I love it and I, I wish I could understand all the stuff that happens in AWS underneath and every once in a while I meet some of these guys and it's very cool but like you know that's where they deliver differentiation right and you know for us you know we you know we can basically focus on you know delivering value to the customer i think the cloud model i think shows everyone that you can deliver stuff as service yep you have horizontal integration points yep. that you need to keep aware of certainly with data yep you need horizontally scalability and freedom of access to data and that brings up the goodness i think that's a great philosophy we subscribe certainly with you on that You'd mentioned earlier about alerts, and one of the conversations that we're hearing around workforce uh, and people is, you know, making sure people are being deployed properly. Because if everything's at a service, then you could, if automation kicks in and things are as service, you can eliminate things. So yep. one of the trends that we're hearing is the move from uh, threat detection to alerts. Okay. Threat detections you can automate that. Yes. And you can share data, so the shared stuff that kicks in. So that's a new kind of trend we're seeing. Alerts, quality alerts. Yeah. <laughs> Having your people work on those kinds of problems, what to pay attention to on the monitoring side, becomes super important. So move, two years ago you couldn't, you know, walk down the street without threat detection, threat detection, threat detection. Although important, that mechan these mechanisms for that now. So what's your thoughts on the, the, the ongoing evolution from threat detection to alerts? I think it's about the human in the end, right? And you know, all the machines are just sitting there, you know, creating signals. Uh, and you know, we can have the discussion about you know AI and you know general AI and all these types of things. I I, I don't really believe that that's going to you know happen anytime soon. Um, but I do like algorithmic approaches. You know, I like the power of data analytics. Sometimes it's simple analytics that you know give good signals. Sometimes it's complicated and in you know, very very sort of sophisticated analytics. But in the end, none of these things can you know get can really capture any sort of you know objective truth, right? And and so it ends up in somebody's queue and then they got to burn through it, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and that is fundamentally uh, again a human problem and you know in the best sense because I think that's that's we as humans, you know, we, we have processing capabilities yeah. that have not been matched, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and, and also humans want to hoard the data too. They don't want oh, I want to protect data if you share the data more transparency, better algorithms. Exactly. <laughs> better visibility, exactly. better alerts. Exactly. Right? <laughs> I do think, you know, to your point, I think in the security space now, of course, you know, there's still a lot of hype around, you know, just, just add AI and you know you're gonna you're gonna be better. But but the reality is that you know this can only go so far and it ends up in somebody's queue and you know analyst workflow, yeah. how do you triage incidents and so forth, how much time do you spend trying to figure out whether it's a true false a true positive or a false positive, that all matters, right? Because no detection system you know, will be, will be perfect at only uh, uh, alerting you on true positive. I heard a comment the other night um, in the bar area, someone was commenting around, you know, security analytics, and they said, yeah, if you don't really know what you're looking for, and you rely too heavily on these metrics, you end up with Chernobyl, which the Netflix series that's out oh, about boy. how they just yeah. follow on data, yeah. and- AC-5. You know, so there, you yeah. know, there you can just, yeah. if you're looking at the, the data too hard, not zooming out and taking a human, holistic yeah. approach, yeah. Why are you measuring something? Why are you monitoring yeah. something? What is a quality signal? Yeah. Look, I think it's fundamentally this is all just tools. Yeah. You know, I'm a, I'm a strong believer in, you know, I don't know whether I'm sort of a strong believer in, in you know, like the humans run the show, <laughs> right? <laughs> and I think that's what makes us human, right? You know, I, I think, you know, outsourcing everything to an algorithm and you know, especially when algorithms start making decisions about humans, you know, that's like a wider topic. It gets very tricky and you yeah. know it usually backfires pretty quickly. So, so the security marketing narrative for you know decades has been fear. Um, yeah. you're in trouble, you're in trouble, you gotta be sure. Amazon put forth today in the keynote that the state of cloud security, the state of the union is actually quite good, and the focus should be on 
how to implement you know, new tooling, and, and we're actually really doing a great job. Do you buy that? To some degree. Uh, I do think that they're paying a lot of attention. Uh, you know, I, I, I do like stuff that they've done from the beginning, like security groups being denied all, and all of those things, right? And they have a bunch of really smart guys over there that really care and worry about this type of stuff. I think they've also learned, you know, over the over the years, you know, in their own move towards selling, you know, from like they started selling to a bunch of hipsters, and you know, and then it started becoming a real enterprise play, you know, that all of these things are important, you know, including having, you know, really good audit trail data and cloud trail and these types of things. Um, I think a lot of this, the the part that I like, and, and we've argued this from the very beginning, and uh, uh, you know, with with, with our prospects, uh, when they when they basically kept saying, oh, but you know, you're putting the data in the cloud, and you know, how can I trust that, right? And we walked them through carefully, and in how we had designed our own security processes, and a lot about was a lot about that. A lot of what that was about automation and basically leveraging the APIs that we had. So basically on the, at its core, AWS has turned the data center into an API, right? And an yes. API is something that I can automate, right? And I can do a good job or I can do a bad job at that, you know, that, is, that depends on the individual and so forth. But it's fundamentally a very powerful uh, you know, abstraction that allows you know, one guy to do the work of potentially hundreds of people running around checking network connections, right? You know, for me as a customer that I can build a, a secure system on top of AWS. So, so they've turned the data center is an API, which is a very powerful metaphor, but they've turned it into a lot of APIs. Does that, how does that affect the complexity and the impact on security? Yeah, I, I know they are, look, you know, the rea reality is complex, right? And, you know, I feel like their approach has been, you know, very carefully, you know, built, like, built from the bottom up, like, yeah. Lego by Lego, and then put other Legos on top of that. And uh, I can I can very much appreciate that approach. I, I don't believe in like you know one button security. I think it's just over. I, I, I think it's just basically everybody everybody in the in the space knows that that's not a reality. Well, we've asked Andy Jassy about this, John, and he said we want the f fine grained access to primitives because yeah. when the market moves, we can move with it. If yeah. we don't have that, we put in all these abstraction layers. It has implications on you know, performance and you know, down, the, down the line, our agility. The power to the people, man. I think uh -huh. you know, ultimately, you know, so many guys at Amazon, you know, they're all very reasonable, but you know, they shouldn't make all the decisions, right? And, and you know, everybody's use case is fundamentally a little bit different, right? And at the same time, you know, they're adding additional things because they realize that like, there's a lot of complexity, even just looking at IAM and these types of things, where it's like, wow, okay, you can, you know, there's a lot of foot guns built into this, right? Yeah. But you know, that the reality is that the entire, the entire industry is a giant foot gun, mm -hmm. right, <laughs> on some level. So, um, you know, I like the fact that they ended up doing stuff like CloudTrail, and then they pull out a CloudTrail and VPC logs, let's say, uh, flow logs into something like GuardDuty, for example, which which they then try to sort of do some some correlation on there and and you know they're trying to automate some of the sort of detection on as far as they can see it yeah. as well. So I overall think they have a good approach to that. I think it's bottoms up. I think that works. I'm a builder type, so you know for me that works. Yeah, yeah. They, you're, you're in their profile. So Christian, final question: What are you looking at, CTO in the industry right now? What are some of the things that you're looking at in the industry that's getting you excited uh, and your guys are integrating into the vision? Well, it's really two things. I think you know one of the things that we are seeing is that as far as uh, you know, just general like how people deploy software. Uh, you know, we had containers, and then nobody knew how what to do with containers, and it was orchestration. And you know, we now have Kubernetes, basically, you know, having won all of the sort of orchestration wars. And uh, I think that's going to be an industry standard that everybody has to deal with for the next couple of years. Uh, a lot of people think you know, a lot of enterprise folks is what I'm seeing are now starting you know to kind of you know land on Kubernetes as part of sort of their cloud transformation, um, you know, even if it's just pulling over monoliths and then, you know, re refactoring them afterwards. So I think that there's a lot of stuff going on there that, uh, uh, you know, Kubernetes like adds its own layer of complexity, right? And there's yeah. opportunity for us yeah. there, you know, as, as a monitoring vendor. Um, I think, you know, I'm extremely, I am probably, you know, more excited, you know, more like almost irrationally excited about all the serverless stuff. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I think I am a big, proponent of not having to do undifferentiated heavy lifting. Yeah. Uh, and I, it feels to me that like, you know, the sort of the sort of serverless track will, will get people to build better applications even faster in time to market so everything mm -hmm. that counts. And then on the security side, I think it's an evergreen thing. You know, you you, you call it fear, you know, and then of course, you know, it, I, I've always said it's basically insurance, right? Uh -huh. On some level, that's why the security market continues to be yeah. essentially evergreen, right? And 
um, you know, our customers are using us for their own security monitoring. You know, we are we are building out a lot of additional, a lot of additional functionality there, and I think that's going to continue to be, you know, a big, uh, a, a, a big and ongoing yeah. discussion because the underlying primitives. You know, now you have Kubernetes. How do you secure that? How do you even do security in the serverless space and whatever yeah. comes next after that? And so. I think also that point. I think you're seeing a new, a new, new brands are emerging as suppliers because they have that architectural horizontal view. They're thinking holistically around the tech stacks yep. and thinking about the role of data. I mean, just IoT is just a mind-blowing yep. conversation around, oh, man, okay, yep. where are you going to pour that, where are you going to store that data? Yep. Okay, so again, all this is kind of moving into a whole nother generational shift, yep. and you're either on the wrong side of the street or the right side of the street. Yeah. This is like really binary at this and point. And it's accelerating, you know? right? I <laughs> yeah. mean, you know, you've, like, folks probably had like one or two transformations in, in the last 30 yeah. years, and now they're running you know, through a transformation every three years. It's like yeah. getting whiplash, right? Buckle so, up. Yep. <laughs> yep. Christian, thanks for coming on theCUBE, great oh, insights. Thanks again for having great me. Great insights here on theCUBE, bringing you all the action in Boston for AWS Reinforced, Amazon Web Services inaugural event around security, security developers, the new security pros and engineers out there. CUBE coverage continues after this short break.